Welcome back Kingdom Citizens. Today we're going to be discussing the infinite banking concept and how to deal with the loan interest. I'm going to share with you a case study, my own numbers, and we're going to be looking at a seven year savings strategy using the infinite banking concept around a whole life insurance product. In this case study, we're using two policies. I currently have two whole life policies in place, one with Guardian, one with Mass Mutual. I'm going to share with you all the details, the amount of money I borrow out each year, what that estimated loan interest cost will be, and then what I'm doing with the money, what are the earnings, the internal rate of return, and let's iron this out together and figure out what's the best way for me to really save money in the 21st century, retain purchasing power, increase wealth, create generational wealth. We're solving for multiple things using $1 and rotating those dollars over and over again using this particular concept. So let's dive right into it. Starting with the four major numbers, current income, I am floating around 25,000 a month average as of 2021. I'm recording this video in September. Expenses are $9,487.50. I typically round up, call it 10K. My cash flow is anywhere from 10,000 to 15,000 plus per month. I have a rule. I personally save 40% of my income. Of that 40%, I have $85,000 per year going into the infinite banking concept, right? So I've got 15,000 a year that goes into my mass mutual policy. I've got 70,000 a year that goes into my guardian policy. These figures over a seven year period are showing the net end year cash value each year, what that estimated amount will be. Same with mass mutual right here, those seven years, what, what those numbers will be if I continue to fund it year over year. I'll tell you personally, I'm in year three of my guardian policy, year two, approaching year three of my mass mutual. So I got right around 33,000 in cash value for mass mutual. And in year three, I'm right around, I think 201 or 202. So I'm not at the end of year three yet, but this is what the number should look like at the end of year three. So I'm in, I'm in year three of this strategy. So with this particular case study, I have four key components that I am operating in addition to the whole life, the two whole life policy. So I've got a credit card that I use where I will run annual expenses that can be paid with a credit card when I switch from monthly to annual, there is a net savings on the bill itself. And because I'm running it through a credit card, I'm getting anywhere from two to 3%, sometimes more in cash back rewards. So the average savings is 10 to 20% on bills alone, okay? So that number is $21,390 and a penny, and a penny is what I'm running through the policies, right? So out of 85,000 a year, initial capital coming from savings, I'm then taking that initial capital, throw it into two policies, totals 85,000 a year in principal dollars, of which I'm going to borrow out $48,000 a year every year for seven years straight. So you can see the numbers. I'll have a total of 336,000 in loans by year seven. When I take out $48,000, they're going to four different locations. I'm funding an HSA account, 3,600 a year, a brokerage account, 8,000 a year, crypto account, 15,000 a year. Specifically that 15,000 is just buying stable coins, USDC, and then expenses, $21,390 and a penny. That's actually the net, right? Cause it's the expense is actually more but because I'm running it through a credit card, switching from monthly to annual, 10 to 20% saving, okay? With the HSA, I'll earn roughly anywhere from four to 6% or higher. Brokerage account, roughly 6% or higher. And the crypto is a set fixed 12% rate of return on my stable coins, okay? So I'm using savings dollars, okay? Not investment dollars, savings dollars, AKA emergency fund, regular savings account at a bank. And I'm slowly but surely over the years, as I continue to make more money and increase my income, moving more and more dollars over to these whole life insurance products and probably will obtain more later on as I continue to 10X my income, okay? Just wanna make sure we're clear on that. I wanna be full transparent 
all the way through in this video. So savings dollars, not investment dollars. Of those savings dollars, I'm using a portion of my expenses every year, both personal and business, to run through the policy to save annually 10 to 20% return. That's cash flow that goes back into here. Increases cash flow gives me more money to invest. I'm only going to do that for the first seven years because eventually that strategy will just not be as effective. I can move that 21,000 and put more to the HSA brokerage and crypto accounts and other things. So eventually that'll become obsolete. It won't be worth it. I'll just continue to run it outside of the policy credit card, continue to, to do basically credit card churning, right? Life hack, travel hack, whatever you want to call it. That will never stop because that's always beneficial, but I'm not going to waste time running it through the, through the policy. I'm only doing that in the beginning for the first seven years. Okay. So I've estimated, I understand we're in 2021 now and the loan interest rates on insurance policies are coming down. So they're actually going to be less than the numbers that I'm displaying. So these numbers are actually going to be inflated, right? Because currently the loan interest rate from mass mutual on my policy is 5% with guardian. It's 5.6% some change, but those numbers are actually going to change as well as the uh, dividends and the guarantee. So there's a couple of changes going on in the insurance industry as a whole with the MEC limits, the 7702 IRS section go, blah, blah, blah. That stuff is, is changing. Nonetheless, it does not affect how I'm using my dollars to stay ahead of whatever my borrowing cost is. I think that is the key when you're implementing this infinite banking concept you have to evaluate the loan interest and how to properly deal with it. I do believe in some of my older videos that I would go over the options, right? Where I'd say, okay, you can either pay the loan interest yourself with your additional cash flow that you have. So you're coming out of pocket and paying your loan interest every single year, year to year, or you allow your earnings from whatever you used the loan dollars for, and you got a rate of return higher than what your borrowing cost was, then you would take the profits, the returns, pay the loan interest in that year. The third option was do nothing. You don't pay the loan interest nor the outstanding loan, and you allow the policy cash value to cover the loan interest, just the loan interest. Okay. That is an option. I personally have not practiced that as I've learned and developed and got better with this strategy. I personally believe that it is not effective. It's not as effective and really beneficial for your policy in the beginning to try to pay the loan interest that you borrow, especially if you're taking out a big lump sum of money. Maybe if it's like a small loan, like if you're putting in like numbers that I'm doing 80 grand, hundred grand, and you're only going to take out like a $10,000 loan or something like that, then maybe there's still a, a net arbitrage because even though when we borrow from a life insurance policy, whether it's direct or non-direct, whatever that crediting rate is, I've learned over the time that that is a gross rate versus your net rate is going to be a different number. That internal rate is going to be lower than the net simple interest rate that you're getting charged when you borrow the money out of the policy. Okay. So that's some key information to, to understand. So in this strategy, what we're doing, well, what I'm doing is I'm putting principal dollars into the policy via savings, the capital that I build up. I borrow money out. I'm using 6% simple interest as my number. And I am personally from my cash flow, additional capital, I'm paying the loan interest every single year, right? Up front, right? Like as soon as the money comes out, what's cool with Guardian is they charge us the loan interest up front for the whole year. So it's simple interest amortized for the whole year. And they, they send it, they, you'll, you'll see it right in your account how much you owe in interest. And what I'll do is I'll, as soon as I take the money out, as soon as it registers, I'm going to pay that interest right there up front. There's a little incentive for doing that through Guardian because that's direct recognition. Through the Mass Mutual, non-direct recognition, 
when I take money out, they're not recognizing that I took that loan out. They're going to still credit me the same rate as if I didn't borrow any of the dollars out and the interest is going to accrue daily. So at the end of that year for the mass mutual, at the end of each year, the loan interest, right? I'll have the loan outstanding every year for seven years straight. I'm going to pay the loan interest before it starts to compound itself. So I'm not going to allow my loan interest to compound. I'm going to keep paying it year over year for the next seven years. I want to be very clear with that. So moving along every year, I'm borrowing out 48,000 and here's how the money is being, being split up. Okay. I've got the saving strategy running just bills, right? That's just saving money period. Right. And I'm saving quite a bit, but then the other dollars are investments. HSA that reduces uh, tax liability, you get a write off plus the money grows tax deferred and I'm estimating four to 6% returns. I'm actually up higher than that. So I've been performing better than my conservative numbers that I'm displaying here. So 6% return, 6%, 12%. I'm using the 4% in this example. I'm using 4%, 6 and 12. Okay. So if you are to run the numbers, you do 3,600 times that by 4%, 8,000 times that by 6, 15,000 times that by 12. Right. And then the savings that I get is uh, really like 12% or more. I think the number was $2,608.76 is what I save every year for the next seven years. As long as I keep running those same bills and those bills don't increase in price, 2,608.76 is the total savings. Okay. So earnings outside of the policy, the 48,000 specifically year one, $5,032.76. Year one at 6%, which that will likely not be the number, I'm overestimating year one, $2,880 is what I'll owe in interest on the policy loan. I'm, again, I'm just gonna use my cash value to pay that. 2,880, I earn 5,032.76 with the 48,000 that got dispersed amongst the four key components here, okay? and just go down the line every year, all the way to year seven, 25,927.35, add all the seven numbers up, total earnings outside of the policy over seven years, as long as I earn the same rate average, $102,273.95. Come over here, 48,000, year one, 96,000, 144, 192, 240, 288, all the way up to 336,000, that year I pay $20,160 in interest. If the rate stays the same, add up all seven numbers, you're going to get $80,640 total interest paid back to the insurance company. Where do you think that loan interest goes? It goes back to the insurance company, which then they what pay dividends to the policy owners. That's me. That's us who have policies. So what's going to happen? over a seven year period or less, that money is going to come back to me in the form of cash value inside my policies, right? So let's look at the estimated cash values over that same seven year period, because regardless of what I have in loans, I'm still going to have the cash value in there as if I never borrowed it in the first place works just like a home equity line of credit, right? So year one, 70,000 goes into the guardian policy, 15,000, right? I've got $60,696 year one, right? Year two, 131, right? 203, 278, 375, 439, 525. When you do the math, 85,000 in principal dollars going into both policies, you're going to get $595,000 principal dollar. Total cash value amongst both policies year seven by year seven 525 121 you're going to get six hundred forty six thousand five hundred twenty dollars minus that from the principal net gains over seven years roughly fifty one thousand five hundred and twenty dollars okay you take that number take the 102 273.95 minus it from loan interest costs over seven years total profit saving strategy with a little mix of investing right here, but safe. In the HSA, I'm buying gold and silver with the brokerage account, index funds, S&P, uh, growth, uh, uh, dividend paying stocks, crypto account, stable coin, right? 
safe investments. Also pretty liquid. Total profit 73,153.95 net, right? So you add those two numbers, 51 to 102 minus it from the 80, net profit 73,153.95, okay? If you were to do the math, where then you say, okay, total cash amongst this whole strategy, you add the cash value year seven on both policies, 525, 263, the 121, 257, and then you do 3,600 growing over 4% over seven years, adding 3,600 each year, 8,000, 15,000. You do all that math, you're gonna get $934,993.95. Total cash assets, total cash value, minus the loan, 336,000, that's the leverage, minus you're left with 598,993.95. 595 principal, 598 still available to leverage and use, right? And that's just the first seven years. In those seven years, majority, a big portion of the leverage was just bills, 21,000 plus just bills. That's why I'm not gonna be doing that forever. So you'll hear me in videos how I talk about running your expenses through uh, the cash value policy. That's fine and dandy for the first few years, maybe seven years. Not the most ideal strategy long-term, in my opinion. If you read the book, Become Your Own Banker, it talks about equipment financing strategy, um, running uh, different types of um, bills, like taxes and things like that. I think it can be effective in the beginning. I don't know how effective it is long term when you compare it to investing, right? So maybe in the beginning it makes sense. You're trying to wipe out some debts. You're trying to flow money to the policy to help max fund it. Totally get it. But over time, you should increase your income, right? The goal is to 10x. So even if you fail in 2x, right? You double your income over a seven year period, maintain the same lifestyle, increase cash flow, mitigate expenses. Don't overspend, right? You you budget properly or you just manage properly and you keep your principles tight. We should have more capital, principal dollars to feed the, the policy or policies itself. Puts us in a very good position. And then running expenses essentially becomes obsolete. You're only going to be saving so much money and you want to be mindful of that loan interest cost in your policy, right? So remember how I mentioned the different options earlier? Either A, you pay the loan interest each and every year to reduce the total interest for however long you keep your loans outstanding for, okay? Option two, you allow your earnings to cover the loan interest. I don't really care for that because you're hurting the investments from doing its work on whole compound interest rule of 72. So you're kind of affecting that and then there's tax implications when you withdraw to pay back, right? So I don't know if I wanna do that, and then third is the policy itself pays for the uh, loan interest, not the loan balance, not the principal balance borrowed out, just the loan interest. That could obviously work. In my case, I still have plenty of cash value I didn't touch. Out of the 85K that went in, only 48 is coming out. So there's still plenty of cash value in there sitting doing nothing, but just growing in the policy, earning a tax-free compounded rate of return. But it's gonna take some time for that money to sit and cook and really build over the years. So I don't wanna necessarily harm the performance of the cash value inside within the insurance company. So I'm gonna go with option one where I just pay the loan interest personally each and every year. So in addition to paying 85K year one, 85K, I'm also paying in an additional 2,880, right? eventually those dollars at $80,640 comes right back to me. You see it in the cash values, right? Eventually, I'm running a negative in the beginning. Outside of the policy, I'm running a positive based on what I borrowed, right? Eventually, the total cash value starts to catch up ahead of the loan interest that's being charged. In part two of this video, I'm gonna go over Okay, Denzel, what do we do with this $336,000 loan? I get it, we keep paying the loan interest, but what's the strategy then? So I'm gonna show you from years eight to 12, an additional five more years of 
how I'm going to operate with these two policies. I showed you the first seven years. This is a savings strategy with a little mix of investing at the HSA, the brokerage account, crypto account, money going to these different locations. I'm relying on compound interest rule of 72 to do its job, right? I'm not hoping and praying on meme stocks or picking the next best crypto currency to buy with the HSA gold and silver. So I'm creating all these safety precautions in place. The goal is to just simply stay ahead of my cost of borrowing, stay ahead of uh, inflation, right? I'm creating these hedges against inflation. And at the end of the day, I'm protecting the principal dollars. 85K over seven years, 595,000. Year seven total, 934,000. 993. I net out minus the leverage. Remember that leverage is here in the investment 21,000 times that by seven, that was bills. That's going to get cut off. I'm going to stop doing that year seven, year eight, pure investment dollars moving forward, right? So you're going to see how this strategy actually goes up exponentially, right? It just starts to grow uh, phenomenally, go very, very well. If you're somebody that's watching this, you're in a position where you're like, okay, I'll do the whole credit card strategy and the credit card training, but I'm just going to do that outside of the policy and I'm going to do what Denzel's doing over here in investments, but maybe I'm going to change it up, do real estate, uh, buy Forex. I'm going to do covered calls. I'm going to do options. I'm going to do free futures. I'm going to fund my Roth IRA and an HSA and a brokerage account. And I'm going to put money into crypto and, and I'm going to bet on Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and some other currents. Totally fine. It's your prerogative. I'm just showing you what I'm doing, how it's been working for me how effective it is. You run the math, you do the numbers, you let me know how you feel, comment below what your thoughts on this. And I'm gonna have a part two that goes, that's it's gonna start with year eight. So be sure to watch this video before you go to part two. Have a wonderful day, God bless, talk soon.